Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Secret Weapon Miniatures and broadcasting uh, live again today with uh, Emily Whitehouse, this time uh, remotely from uh, her home studio uh, as we get ready to uh, add some rust to that uh, incredible diorama of hers. Um, but uh, of course, first I have uh, the obligatory uh, product photo or product preview for you. Uh, I'm going to take you on a quick uh, ride here real quick. Silent Halls that we're getting ready to put out. So here is that night base. Love that one. This is a really fun one to, to make. Let's see what else. Uh, bag of tricks today. The uh, flight base. It's a nice little recessed section there. Oh, what's this? The uh, 80, I guess. Grab a couple of the, uh, let's see, a couple of 60s. Woo! So here's one of the 60 millimeters. The other. And since I know folks are going to want to uh, see the 32s, I'll put these away and get to the uh, main event. So, yeah, here's one of those uh, 32s. And another one at random. Good stuff. But of course, get this adjusted again. We've got the main event and an Emily. <laughs> so here is, now I'm not even going to be able to get this whole thing. I can't uh, even get it on my screen. It's just so massive. All right, let's see what we can do here. This whole stream is going to be a mix of weird camera angles and uh, whatnot. So coming in from what is about the end of the bridge here, um, actually, I guess it's only visible from about the halfway point. So this is the midpoint of the bridge, uh, quite exactly, in fact. Um, yeah, you can see how far back this thing really goes. And uh, again, for a sense of scale, Am I on camera here? Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, so, yeah. And, of course, this is a 1 1 44th scale Gundam sitting over here. We'll get him, uh, there you go, visible on the bridge. And I'll see where I can uh, hide the camera to uh, get in here and give us a better angle, perhaps. Assuming I can get uh, various uh, cables and shelves to cooperate. The streaming out here setup is still kind of work in progress. I think I'm going to end up installing a small like workbench table in the corner here to be able to sit the laptop and whatnot on. And that makes sense. All right, so now we can get the whole thing in here at least, which means you guys will have a wonderful view of my back uh, as I do rust, uh, which is great. It's a nice advertisement. <laughs> but uh, I'll make it work. I'll work around that and uh, do my best to uh, work from this direction and, and keep it going in here. Um, so where do you want to start? We were talking scale stuff. We were talking the rust and detailing on the uh, uh, bridge supports and all of that. Uh, well, one thing I do want to say uh, before we get too far into it is that we're actually broadcasting on both of our channels at the moment. That's right. It was our big Halloween joke about the crossing the streams. Yeah. Uh, so uh, people on my stream can make sure to view Mr. Justin's stream, uh, the link provided conveniently on the bottom. Uh, but he didn't install OBS or XSplit or anything on his laptop before he came over here. So there's no convenient link to my stuff. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> We'll get uh, Brian here to uh, include a comment, at least in the, uh, or uh, include a comment with a, a link for you there. Uh, as long as he remembers to spell my name correctly. <laughs> it's the little things, right? Yeah. Uh, so right. on the project. Uh, yeah. So uh, the main things that are left to do with it, uh, the biggest one is the rust on the bridge. Um, I mean, it's a nice brownish color at the moment, but it 
can look so much better. And you're, of course, the master of Rust. Oh, so I uh, figured it's good to have you over here to give me a hand with it. Uh, and then there's just some touch-up stuff I need to do because I added the nice solid walls to the side of it mm -hmm. and clean up the spots where I added plaster and whatnot. Uh, and then just make the foliage and plants and everything look nicer. Okay. Um, we had talked about doing some small tents uh, to go in the Xeon camp as well. Yeah, that's the spot up here. Is that visible? Yeah, that's visible. Okay, we're good. Yeah. And you can see I got these great little... One one forty fourth shot myself. Uh, uh, vehicles. Yeah, um, these little guys are great. Which I need. I still need to paint them up. I still need to paint this thing up too. Um, but yeah, let me uh, bring that into my camera. So cute little tiny thing. Yeah. Huh. Here I'll show it off yeah. on the side for the scale. Yeah. So this is a uh, you know infantry vehicle. It's the scale that we're working at. Uh, and I do actually have a bunch of soldiers and whatnot to go in that camp as well. I just haven't brought them out because they're tiny, and if we sneeze, they'll fall. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. All right. So in terms of uh, the foliage and groundwork over here, what what's our, what are our textures? So this is dirt road, mm -hmm. dirt road. Yeah, and then uh, this still needs to get greened up. Um, the Zaku is going to be sitting over here, though, mm -hmm. uh, and I want to I want to get done with the weathering on it. Um, Stick it there and put it recessed into some mud because it's, you know, 20 ton robot. Yeah, it's um, gonna sink a bit. So I'll end up sculpting some mold up, up, some mud up to it um, to blend it into the terrain a bit more. Cool. You gonna hide any detail inside of the little building? Uh, yeah, I actually have a foundation uh, separate that I've already pre cut and yeah. just need to work on. And nice. yeah, that'll get some little details in there. Nice, right on. Yeah, that's fun. That way, if anybody's ever looking around, like, oh my god, there's desks in here. I'm gonna die. Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm gonna. I should probably wander over occasionally to check comments. I guess. I mean, you know, people want to watch your stream. I mean, that's you know. Um, I also I'm thinking about putting some uh, graffiti on the bridge as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it would take one of us knowing Vietnamese. <laughs> or just look up Vietnamese graffiti. And yeah. Talk. Uh, one of the beauties of uh, Google Images, right? And then using a very tiny little brush. Oh, I'd make a mask for that uh, airbrush. But then I find it's easier for me to cut a mask by hand than it is to freehand most of the time. So. But you're talking about a mask that's like a millimeter. Well, who says that? Like even if these guys, you remember your uh, guys are like two or three millimeters tall. Yeah. So graffiti gets big. That's true. It could still be at scale three of these guys tall so you know 10 mil that's fair yeah all right so uh let's start with a quick refresher on painting rust all right so uh, uh em was good enough to uh, have the uh, secret weapon rust set here for me today um, i will be using probably not all of these i don't think i'll use a uh, rust shadow much today um, but i do have the others uh, in particular, uh, one of the things uh, I love about bridges like this is old rust was specifically designed for it. Um, it's actually the most uh, complicated to make color in the set, uh, just because, um, yeah, normally when you're when you're mixing up the paint, uh, you put in a, a maximum of uh, uh, hopefully two colors, two pigments, uh, three pigments tops. There's a maximum quantity of pigment you can put in to still maintain consistency. And uh, yeah, this is uh, six different colors to get what we want. And in those cases, uh, just just a couple of points uh, on a couple of those colors. Um, but I'm going to use a lot of the uh, old rust, red rust, uh, brown rust today. A uh, bit of the orange and yellow for some streaking later uh, to do that in acrylic. Um, and I'm going to start with blister foam to get the texture I want to. You have all the paint, so I'll have you fill me up too. Do you have a uh, pin to poke these with? I have some paper clips here. Well, 
here, you know. That's wrong. Shaking paint is generally good practice. Doesn't take much. I've seen some pretty ridiculous things out there for shaking up paint. Yeah. But it does not take much. That reminds me of a swing by the warehouse and just get some uh, extra caps. Maybe some larger terrain components. And I need to actually use these as our uh, uh, gates uh, a lot for the resin so I can attach an eighth inch rod on here onto the model and put it right on here and we'll have a wonderful gate for making the prototypes. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm dipping my you're rest the, in my spine. The darker one first. Uh, yeah, however you're going to, I mean, it's random is random. Yeah. And the rest is going to be random, so. And we're hitting this fairly heavy, this whole truss bridge. Uh, so on the uh, to do list, when I fix up this streaming setup out here, is a uh, better mounting for the camera because it's currently just kind of attached to the side of a plastic table, and uh, it's not very happy with Bouncing that. like mad. Uh, a little bit, and also I think I've broken part of the plastic now tightening it. Oh, nice. So that's good. Just a little. Make sure to do the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to keep myself visible here. In fact, I'm going to move the camera onto the bouncy table too. Yeah, if you can, want, if you can bring it over on my side. Well, I was thinking I'd bring it right here where I'm working. Oh, okay, that's fine. I was thinking that you could put it here and then it's facing that way. Uh, yeah, that's probably better to actually show what you're doing rather than your face. Yeah, they don't need to see what I look like. They need to see what this looks like. Spongy, 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 spongy. I took a spongy out to see a movie. Didn't have to pay to get it in. You know what I'm going to do while I bounce over here? Just hold on to that. <laughs> you know, that might be a good idea. I pretty much saturated this thing in Gorilla Glow, but that doesn't mean it's not going to break. It's only just a little wobbly. Just a, just a touch. We squish. Woo! Fling in paint. Fling in paint. It's fine. I haven't finished the ground there. Oh, good. Good news is it's, you know, ground color. Yeah. I'll just blend that in for you. Yeah. Definitely here to help. App. Uh. end up getting that water effects poured in the next day or two. Start at least because it's going to take a couple of pours to get it how I want. For a sec, just to mix things up a bit. I'm good with my red rust.
Now this color matches the uh, original rust you had on here, that, that base coat pretty well. Yeah. And uh, that'll be good for helping uh, break up some of this purple. So I'll bring you guys in here for just a second. So you can see I've got a patch right here. It's just kind of blobby. So I can now get in there with the red and break that up. We'll do this with some pigment later, but you you want to come in with your acrylic first, uh, or it won't look as realistic. The majority of rust, as much as I like doing heavy rust, is fairly subtle, uh, even on a fully rusted thing like this. It's not as dry, not as textured, it's just old. Doesn't need to look as flaky. So that's definitely helped break up the pattern of texture here. Now I'm going to have a seat and come work on the sides a bit. Gotta get everywhere. The areas closest to the moisture here, of course, are going to be the areas most prone to streaking and new rust color. So I'll aim to do some effect across these. And make sure I get this nice and crunky. So we've introduced Seamus to the original Scooby-Doo cartoons. All right, I told you this because you brought over the... Uh, yeah, I brought you Mr. A. Mr. A, that's right. Yeah, he's digging it. Awesome. It's a good show. Yeah, we let him watch the uh, Scooby Doo movie too. The, what, the 2001? Yeah. yeah. That was more fun than I thought it would be. Monica and I started number two, but it was just like Buffy the rerun for the first 20 minutes. So we gave up. Still additional light in here. I'm still feeling like I need more light. Always. It's the next big challenge for the studio remodel now is getting enough light in there for all of us to be happy. Yeah. Although the lights under the uh, cabinets are pretty damn great. Yeah, those were really nice. Monica's actually not sure if she wants to be under them, so I've offered to trade spots with her. I don't care. I'll take that light. It would provide you a nice backdrop for when you're uh, doing this over there. Yeah. And that wood wall and all of the art and whatnot. So what about there in audience land? What are uh, what are you crazy kids working on this week? Since today is mostly uh, watching all this awesome spongy, spongy, spongy action. On the watch paper. <laughs> Get the uh, old rest, please. Purple. We need a chance. Yeah. I'll switch colors for now.
Brian's working on a Tau Kill team. That's pretty cool. I really need to put together a kill team from one of my painted armies and stop trying to paint new kill teams. Because I would like to go play. The local G-Dubs has a uh, league, too. I know a bunch of folks in it. Well, that didn't work, Justin. Yeah, I've been considering doing that as well. I've got enough 40k figures. I should be able to put something together. Right? That's the whole idea. Of course, I did that with my Vestroyans and then decided to repaint them all. It's funny how that happens. Yeah. No, he's also playing in a kill team league with his orcs. Two wins, one loss. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I've really been enjoying the uh, games that Games Workshop has been putting out lately to help act as an introduction to their product. Well, it's their broader catalog, I should say. Yeah. It's nice to have multiple uses for the the box sets. I really like that uh, Speed Freaks. Yeah. Stuff. Uh, and the new... Uh, Taking commissions on Speed Freaks. Me too. <laughs> Granted, I'm taking commissions on just about everything. So. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Don't send me uh, things that require flex jumps. <laughs> but... Yeah. Um, the I can't remember what they, they're calling it, but it's the Shade Fire for 40k. Uh, has some nice models coming. Got a new crew hunter in that set. Oh, nice. I see the crew coming. I like the crew. They're the only part of the town I like. Oh, weep, so, you know, big stompy robots. Yeah. Better based on their American property, but, you know, whatever. Nobody cares about Starship Troopers. Yeah. Uh, Blackstone Fortress is uh, the uh, game I am thinking of, which is Shades Fire, but before he came. Ah, cool, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability to uh, manually focus and whatnot, so my camera's going to be all sorts of uh, out of whack today until I figure out how I change that setting. Arms getting tired. I'm sorry. It's a small bridge. Yeah. I stipple all day. I stipple all night. 
and even with how uh, big this end is, it's still out of scale, actually, from what it should be. Well, yeah, because it should be, what, half again as wide, I think? Um, no, uh, it should actually be slightly narrower, uh, but longer. Well, yeah. Because um, if we take a car and put it on the bridge, uh, but it's only a two-lane bridge, but uh, it actually, in the, the show, it has a second, second railroad track, but dealing with more track. <laughs> yeah, it should be probably like another two feet long for where they are. The 8th MS team is located for the sniper's nest. The sniper's nest should probably be about another half a foot up. Goodness. Yeah. But you're only getting so carried away. Yeah. I still have to fit in a car and then a house. Eventually. Seems fair. Spongy, spongy, spongy. Everybody loves it, it's spongy. And yeah, Tom, the weather is really great today. It's nice and sunny in Cali, slightly cool. Getting up to, I think, 81 or 82 today or something. Oh, nice. It's funny, I was seeing friends on Facebook, East Coast, to talk about, you know, these impossible 40 to 50 degree weather change or temperature changes in the course of the day. They're like, where does that happen? Oh my God, this is nuts. I'm like, Sacramento? Yeah. Every day, like it was 44 degrees when I woke up, and it's going to be like 84 today, and that seems so very normal to me. It does. <laughs> My fingers are very rusty. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing we know who makes the paint and what's in it. Yeah. All right, switching back. Here's some of this. Blend in that violet color so it's clear that it's layered. The more layers we do with this, the more realistic it's going to look. But I know you don't want to spend a hundred hours on rusting your bridge. I mean, you know. Okay, I don't want to spend a hundred hours rusting your bridge. That's fair. I invite you to. crampy there. A little bit. I think you're going up. <laughs> Maybe it's only the old shoulder injury that gets me. 
asking to you a lot of this. I don't know why. Brown rust, please. Brown rust. I have red or rust. Red rust. It is kind of a brown. But also kind of a red. Yes. So right now I'm really looking for spots where the purple's either too heavy for my taste, not textured, or particularly anywhere that my uh, stippling gave me a texture, because I use the same spot on the sponge too many times, I'm really trying to break that up. And I've gone back and forth over this a lot to really sell the Asian bridge. It is really amazing to uh, see it come together. Yeah. From just being some random splotches of color to <laughs> actually looking like... Uh, and it'll happen quick. Like, you'll pull the sponge away and suddenly be like, oh, hey, that, that actually looks pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> Did I do that? Now I get a little funky. Get some of my orange rust out here. Just a couple little spots. Orange is one of the ones in our clear base, so it goes on nice and translucent, especially when you're stiff on like this. Push that down on this end. The moisture would give it more opportunity for fresh rest. You uh, pour me a bit, pour me a glass. Yeah, have a shot of orange rest. Fingertip and boom, problem solved. I hit a couple of these weld spots here, too. A little emphasis. And then, yeah, I'm not going to say the welder was drunk, but uh, there's something going on with that welder that day. Take a tiny little bit. I'm also going to bring it down on the bricks, right up against the trellis. Take you on the uh, Blair Witch tour of the project again. See if I can get some uh, good visual here on the rust. There we are. And the little spots where I brought it down onto the uh, brick a little bit. Is 
this is that part where I take a brief break for water and then come back and I actually think I'll put a little pigment on here to show the whole thing come together. I'll have you uh, come over to my side too and peek. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Extricate myself from the cables. Yeah, good luck. So you'll want to do more to break up the like dots. Mm -hmm. Anywhere it's a big splotch, just hit that with the uh, red rust. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, you can check out the texture on the other side too. Yeah. Let's see what I mean. We really want that uh, purple rust. Oh yeah. To actually be behind. Yeah. The red rust. Um, and build that up in layers that way. Because that old rust is going to be in the background. And hey, welcome, folks. So we've got some uh, new viewers now. Good to see you. All right. Uh, at this point, I'm going to borrow your pigments. Oh, my. Uh, which color would you like? Uh, violet. Me and they go into my office to get some. Uh, I've got red rust here, various grays. So red rust. All right. And then, okay, so violet. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, any of the yellows. <laughs> and uh, brown. Violet, brown rust, any yellow. Pigment, dark yellow, perfect. Uh, isopropyl or uh, pigment fixer? I got isopropyl on the bucket down there. Okay, cool. Well, for the folks uh, just joining us now, we are broadcasting live from uh, Emily's studio here on this massive Gundam diorama. Uh, as I set up for the other step, I'll uh, bring the camera back so you get an idea of just how big this thing is. <laughs> I can't uh, reach all the way across it, in fact. So we've been uh, adding rust to the bridge, and I've done my uh, acrylic texture so far, uh, so I'm going to jump in with some uh, dry pigments. I have uh, dark yellow and rust red here. Hey, look, I think I can even get these on the screen. Hey, look at that. Woo! If I can find them in front of this. I want that. Oh, I want open because it's sealed. Hey, look at that. I haven't seen a sealed bottle of pigment in so long. Boom, oh, restaurant. All right. Crummy brush here. Rest her in. Woo! Violet, have rust red, and rust red. Should it do, 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 do. All right, definitely pigment time. <laughs> Can't rust this. Oh, wait. Gonna rest this. You rest it, Justin, instead of fix it, Felix. Yeah. I can rest it. <laughs> but Justin, it's a wooden handle. I can rest it. <laughs> I think we uh, found your Adepticon cosplay. Yeah. 
rest it, Justin. Yeah. We'll get you some orange overalls. There you go. And this is already him. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I may actually not. I had a bright orange coverall jumpsuit thing for one of the uh, juggling games that I used to do. Very dangerous juggling. So, yeah, we had bright orange jumpsuits. It was great. Is this 91 or 99? Don't remember. Did you get a grocery store? Uh, Walgreens. Yeah, 91. Thank you. All right, come here, cray brushes. Hmm. Guilty. All right, so now I have, and you guys can actually see them at this point, I have uh, Violet, Rust Red, Rust Brown, and a little bit of uh, Dark Yellow. I'm going to use the violent, uh, violent, <laughs> use the violet um, again to emphasize those areas where I went over with the uh, old rust. I'm now going to come around some of them in spots and emphasize that with some of the dry pigment wash that I've made here. We'd normally do this with a fixer, but neither of us has anything. It happens. Well, and I don't mind working with isopropyl. I actually like the stuff. We're all looking um, <laughs> But it is the best way to strip your mouth. Let's bring you guys in for the ride. You'll want to be careful because it is just plastic hard. It has primer and whatnot on it, but that doesn't particularly mean that it's going to hold up. So again, this is the violet wash I've made. You can see I'm stippling this in here too. Not brushing or making it big pools. I am getting it the brush nice and wet because I want gravity to do some of the job for me and help spread out the pigment in a more natural way. Sorry. Okay. Play footsie here. Oh dear. It's not that kind of broadcast. All right. So again, the dry pigment uh, should be an accent, generally speaking. Um, you really overdo it. Particularly with rust, I find people will do the whole rust with just pigment. And it, I think it looks a bit messy, but it may just be me. There's a bit of a learning curve with it, um, especially if you don't have a master to just teach you. Um, a lot of people who are uh, that I've seen that are just like getting started with doing weathering and rust and whatnot always seem to go too heavy with it, uh, and it's really once they get their stride of figuring out how everything works and what to do that they. Uh, tone it down and it gets more realistic. So let's see if I can get this in focus. I'll use the white brush handle here as a in the hope. Uh, maybe not very well. Finger. Here we go. So you can see the difference hopefully right in here. Uh, between the original paint and now you can see this little dry 
patch. And that was why I applied the pigment. And you can see how even with the uh, old rust acrylic there, um, there's definitely a difference between the two. Get that nice dry texture while emphasizing existing color. Exciting new games right now. Uh, we did the Fallout 76 beta last night. Oh, yeah, what'd you guys think? Um, it's not bad. Uh, it's there's a few things that we don't quite care for in it, uh, that they probably won't end up changing. Uh, but still kind of undecided on whether or not we're going to keep our pre order. There is a pacifist mode, so you don't have to worry about getting ganked. Um, That's nice. But if you die, even with that on, you'll lose all of your um, materials because somebody will come steal it from you before you get back. That's delightful. Yeah. And then you can't get revenge on somebody who just stole all of your stuff. Because you're in pacifist mode. Yeah. Yeah, they have to, uh, if you shoot somebody, they have to shoot you back to actually engage PvP. Oh, so even if you're being shot, you can just ignore it? Yeah. All right, I like that. <laughs> it's a nice big map. Space building is fun. Until you lose all your materials. Until <laughs> so you lose all your materials, yeah, sure. Uh, there's you saw super mutants, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah there shouldn't be super mutants. Yeah, there are super mutants. People, please stop screwing up Fallout. <laughs> no. Two player simultaneous modeling action. <laughs> Thanks, Cat. Yeah, we should have made our uh, YouTube descriptions two uh, two live models performing in the studio. Numbers would have been through the roof, but only for seconds at a time. <laughs> this is not what I want. Uh, two modelers, one bridge. <laughs> too soon, too soon. Is it? Forever. Okay. <laughs> Forever too soon. Move the camera again. I'm off. Screen. Let's bring this up just a bit. And I'm still just using the uh, violet pigment, building up a nice thick layer right here, in fact. Looking around for spots where I want some additional emphasis. Try to hit some of those vertical posts. Largely been neglecting. So again, pigment as an accent, not primary material. And the 
top here, a few other spots. I'll load it with uh, more ISO than pigment and let it run down for me. So you see how I'm loading it up at the top. early I keep thinking well it must already be noon because I'm hungry time to stop the broadcast I was hungry before you got here so you know that's fair didn't have breakfast though so that's probably well that's it. probably uh, I'll do it I didn't have anything to eat and then I found myself hungry I don't know how it worked it just sort of happened It's good to distract yourself. That will work with us. In addition to having the backside of the bridge just look absolutely fantastic because you're doing it, uh, it is great to have some company in here while I'm working on this thing. Absolutely. It's fun project. It's not difficult to get me to come to rest. <laughs> Mix up the brown rust now. Same deal, coming into accent. these pink colors. They came out really well. Oh, the rest paints? Yeah. Yeah, it's still the one where I had high expectations and uh, better than I'd, I'd hoped for. Especially old rust. There's a number of paints in the, uh, the weathering line that I, I use for a lot of stops. But the rust mainly gets used when I'm doing this. Yeah. You got really nice blues and greens. And everybody loves tire black. Everybody loves tire black. Used uh, dark iron uh, yeah. a lot on the uh, Xeon suits. There are uh, darker metal bits and on the weapons and whatnot. Yeah, I used that for all the uh, dark bits on the uh, Zaku Amazing. And yeah, it turned out really nice. I'm really happy. Because I can. You know, you want the judges to not want to touch anything because they're going to get tinnitus or tetanus? Tetanus. Tinnitus is the other one. <laughs> the same, but totally different.
my nice textures. Mom always said I can be anything I want, so I'm a rust monster. You don't do figures often, but you should totally paint one of those. There's a couple of nice ones out on the market at the moment. Rust them? <laughs> yeah, exactly. A rusty rust monster. Hey, Ink Gumpla, thanks for joining in. biggest downfalls with this camera is uh, the actual device that holds sit to the mount broke. Oh no. So I had to yeah, duct tape in to tie and... it. Uh, so I can't rotate it anymore. <laughs> so getting lots of wonderful kind of wide shot angle. Lots of Dutch angles. The rest red. Just for emphasis in spots. Break up some of my over applied colors here and there. Now to join some of that brown. And of course, a little bit of the dark yellow. Now I did not clean off my brush from the reds. So it's going to make this just a touch of orange. And that's actually perfect. So in this case, the yellow I only want down here. I'm gonna bring you guys down again. Along just a few spots. And we're gonna get water, moisture buildup. The yellow is gonna have a real pop when it drops. camera for just a sec folks rather than keep moving you guys around with me you 
can already see in spots where it's drying. What kind of impact it's going to have. And why I'm only doing a little, but I want to break up this spot right here, so I'm going to hit it right there. Over here. All right. And then, <coughs> excuse me, come in on the little brick wall right here, right at the truss again, and let that streak down a bit. Some of that up. too heavy. So I'm just going straight as purple now, very carefully. And this is one of those effects we can do with the, the streaking on the bridge with oils, but more too pigment. All right, so quick tour of the bridge again. Get uh, this is here on some of the nice rusty spots. I think I'll have you uh, come over with your pigments and. Give me a quick run through. The uh, oil paints me? Uh, no, your pigments. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got you got all of them over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> come sit on my side for a little bit. Do some pigment. You want to come see this real quick? Yeah. Come on over there. Uh, Dress this up. It's all be on that side. So yeah, hitting it all for emphasis, right? So where you have the color already, and then you can stick the yellow just toward the bridge. You'd actually get your uh, water points. Yeah. Some of these. One 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 of these. Stand for a minute. It's nice to get up. All right. So I would start with the violet, and we'll thin these down a bit more and dry it out a bit like nice purples want to do. And I'd start with the violet, and then find some of your spots here where you've already the got, violet, right? Yeah. You've already got some violet emphasis, and just where you feel like it to use a slightly different violet with a nice dry patina. On the whole, yeah, you're going pretty random. So the only thing that's not going to be random is the application of the uh, yellow. Or semi-random. I like how that just kind of flows down. Mm -hmm. That's one of the advantages, really, of doing it as a wash on a project like this. Gravity will do a lot of the work for you. Flows down and it just it also flows across this little barrier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we do it with the uh, pigment fixer, make the launch directly with the pigment fixer, it's uh, uh, even less viscous, it has a lower viscosity than ice chrome. All right. 
So what Emily does, uh, oh, and here's some plain ice for one case. You do need to clean the brush. Thank you. While Emily does uh, her rust over here, I'm actually going to come over here and talk about scale with foliage and some challenges. Do you happen to have one of the uh, little fellas in here? No, I do not. Okay, that's fine. Excuse me, we've got our truck, and that's a good place to start. So again, looking at scale, in fact, I'll bring this right over here. I'll also uh, mention the fun joy I had of uh, finding 1144th static grass. <laughs> At that point, I just cut up field grass. Yeah, I'm busy. Well, that's right. So this is our 1144th scale little Humvee. It's a great little piece, too. I like it. But... Uh, Again, to give you a sense of scale, I mean, the little guys fit inside of there. So we're talking about uh, figures that are smaller than my thumbnail. So when we're looking at foliage issues or options, it gets a bit tricky because, I mean, I have all of the Men Nature and Silifor stuff, but let's take a look at, say, uh, oh, a common set of flowers here. So this is great for a nice flowering field, except for the fact that the flowers are the size of trucks. So we can uh, round that by being able to break stuff up. We can actually cheat some of this stuff into a scene like this. I've got uh, assorted glues up on the boat. Well, I'm not going to glue yet. I uh, don't want to go gluing on your piece here. Just going to start laying out some clumpy ideas. So I'm breaking up a little clump of these guys, if I can, with or without the flowers, turn this into a large shrub. Oh, let's get it over here for scale. But even then, we're talking about a pretty big thing by comparison here to the truck. But it can work. Pick off a couple of the little flowers, maybe. But at scale at this point, we can actually use that to add some color, some variation, some interest over here on the uh, foliage, especially. Let's see if I bring the camera around even further. On today's super Blair Witchy episode. Spooky. Yeah, that's it. We're doing it to be spooky. My, yes, I am. So I can still get some of these little pieces in here. We've just got to be careful of the scale of creep, particularly on things like the flowers. Where the back for you go? Now, none of my laser cut burns and stuff like that are going to work either because they're gigantic. Um, Here's a fun example. So I'm ready to go uh, lilies, which are really cool, but uh, also truck sized. Where we can get away with stuff are things like, once I open this one, HO scale hedges. Granted, I don't think these guys are going to have a nice flowering hedge up here at the base, <laughs> but they do make. Flowering hedges and non-flowering hedges in HO scale. And hopefully N scale as well. That's yes. what this is. Yeah, but that's about <laughs> as small as we can get. I have not seen them in N scale. Mm -hmm. Hey, I found grass in N scale. We could probably make bushes. Someone somewhere. And same thing, I've even got these little flowery tufty things that I can glue up. But even that's too large, whereas a few of its little petals. Can add a nice splash of color 
without having to worry about the scale so much. Even some of the reclaimed natural materials that I like to use won't work well here. As we start talking about this being a big old tree. Plonk. <laughs> well, I can't handle that all day. <laughs> Maybe not seen appropriate, but not all day. But yeah, so in this case, instead of being bushes, they are definitely trees. And off screen. So see that one actually does kind of work. So the moss I use though, not so much texture on this is going to be much too large. You can use teeny tiny bits as dry grass, but not clumps. Not even partial clumps. I'm going to keep working with Emily uh, on her side there and uh, give her a little more uh, uh, assistance. Uh, but unless folks have questions, I'm going to shut down my camera uh, so I can head over there and you guys don't have to worry about uh, well, staring at my back for uh, an extended period of time. Uh, as always, I'm glad that folks tuned in for Workbench Wednesday. I really appreciate it. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, hey, please come back uh, ready to ask questions and have fun. And I'll see you next Wednesday, same time, same place. Make sure to like and subscribe. Woohoo! Like and subscribe. <laughs> Cheers, folks. Have fun. <laughs>